All right, so welcome everybody to the Q1 2024 by the Block Project update. Um, we've had a very, very challenging real estate year uh, over the past 12 months, but um, the project's doing well. We bought in the right area. We um, have seen some turnover, which we haven't seen for the first two or three years. You know, um, we were doing pretty good with all tenants staying there. Um, we had three or four that... Um, we, we're having to evict right now. We'll talk about that in a little bit during the process. That's just part of the real estate game. Uh, we had two tenants actually pass away over the past two years, and they had been there for a long time. So, you know, that was that was rough to see them um, transition on. But uh, lots of good things to talk about here. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and we can get the uh, presentation started. Let's see, start from the beginning. Okay. So first thing I want to do is show you guys a lot of the activity that's going on in the area. So I actually went out there today and it was kind of overcast, kind of gloomy, but I just wanted to see real time what, what the area is looking like. So let's see if I can get this to, uh, let's see. And if I can't get it to play. Okay, it's giving me a little issue here. Hold on, guys. We'll do this the old-fashioned way. I'm going to go to the YouTube. Let's see. PowerPoint's moving slow today. So, let's see your channel. Three years ago, I set up on a mission. Three years ago, I set up on a mission. Well, video. Okay, BTB flyover, let's see, stop screen share. All right, let me see, I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, so let's give you guys a good feel for where we are. So we're, we're flying over the property that's right at the bottom of us in the front. Uh, when we first started this project, a while back, there was absolutely no new construction activity. Uh, this area behind the house was a bunch of drug houses. Um, it was in very poor condition. It was pretty it was pretty unsafe, but we knew that all the redevelopment was coming. So as we uh, continue to move forward, um, a lot of builders and developers started buying in the area. And you can see here, all this is new construction back here. So this project is underway. That white building that's uh, perpendicular to us. Those two houses have been built and sold. They're sold for like three eighty five, dollars And then this next block, you'll see uh, new construction in the entire block. So I believe that's two, four, six, eight houses right there that were sold above $400,000. Right in the same vicinity of where we are, which is, this area was really the worst part of the neighborhood. So we're going to go back we're going back north now. We're flying back over our property, which is right here, the 18 houses, and we're past Lyons Avenue. We're we'll going go across this church parking lot right here. And you see there's a bunch of new construction going on up here. Now, this area was completely desolate. It was like a, a landfill just dumped when we got started. And then as we turn right here, all these white houses you see, um, this these were some really 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 rundown houses. The Fifth Ward uh, Redevelopment Corporation is turning these into artist lofts, so people from the community or from anywhere in the city that you know have something to do with the arts, whether they're music or film production or whatever, they'll be able to live and reside there. And this whole street is still gonna gonna end up becoming a um a entertainment district because if you all remember, um, this was deemed the first cultural arts district, the first African American cultural arts district in the state of Texas like about um, a year after we got into the project and we, we purchased it. So let me go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so let's get into some numbers, just technical numbers as far as um the market. So Houston overall, the real estate market, as you can see, um, over the past 24 months, we, you know, we started off 2023, everything was down. Um, of course, interest rates were high. Everybody knows about that. Um, nothing new. Um, but this, this, um, it, all of these charts here are showing you all the indicators over the past 12 months in the Houston market overall. So all these changes are positive. 
Um, so the the rent rolls have uh, rent rates have gone up again. Um, statistics for the 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 price per square foot of the homes uh, were down almost ten dollars a square foot at the beginning of twenty twenty three. Um, now they're up uh, almost ten dollars, which is good. Um, the average days on market has trended um, a little bit higher, but that's because more builders are building again, which is uh, which is technically a good sign. Um, if you look at the, the pre foreclosure numbers in January 2023, they were they were the highest. At the end of the year, you're always going to see a little bit more foreclosures as people transition and they move and all that kind of stuff. So um, we're looking at where we are in 2024. We're doing a lot better. Um, the average monthly rent rate has gone up significantly, which is crazy. I mean, the, the the price for the for the size of units has gone up significantly. So that that just is an indicator of the demand of people moving from outside markets back into the Houston market, which just shows we have a strong, uh, stable um, city to be to be doing our projects in and our opportunities for continued growth. And listing trends, you know, you can see all that stuff, pretty much all the same. Um, then we have list price versus sale price. So you can see that there's a drastic difference in those two numbers. Um, when you see a drastic difference, that means sometimes a lot of things aren't selling. You want the when those numbers are close, that means the market and the buyers and the sellers are kind of in line and kind of in tune. And as you see, as we start January 2024, you'll see that the, those numbers are, are coming closer together, which is great for the market. And then lastly, the most important one is the days on market versus the inventory. So when you see a big gap between those two, that means that there's a lot of property that's just sitting. When you see those numbers get really close, like this bottom right chart, it, it says that almost as soon as things are listed, um, the, if as long as it's priced right, the demand is there and, and they'll get taken off the market, which which is the key indicator for a strong housing market. <laughs> so we're going to go more specifically and look at Fifth Ward um, solely. And if you look at these numbers, they're even... Um, more indicators that fifth ward is strong because if you look at the the second chart, the first line graph, it shows from January twenty twenty three to January twenty twenty four, we've had a consistent increase in price per square foot. Whereas the chart you saw for Houston, it fluctuated. So that means that some areas of Houston values have did go down last year. However, because of all the activity going on in fifth ward, we've seen nothing but uh, steady value increases. And if you look at all the other charts, they're basically showing pretty much the same thing. Um, you know, all positive indicators here. And if you look at the inventory versus days on market, the bottom right corner, that bottom line graph that that was that met almost at zero for the last one, you can see the inventory is actually below the demand now. So that means there's a, there's going to be a, a demand for even more housing and as more builders come back and for more property owners sell, we're going to see even more activity in the local market here. Uh, this chart on the right, Specifically, it's talking about lot prices, which is very important. And you want to look at the very end of the year because that's that, that you know how you close out the year is usually how the next year is going to start. So if you guys really look at this, we bought our property in 2020. Okay, so the average lot price in November, December, sixty five to seventy thousand. Average lot price is now ninety two thousand to one hundred and forty thousand. So that's just another clear indicator that we are in the heart of where all the value increases are. Um, We've been able to maintain our investment, um, secure our investment, and we do have value appreciation. Okay. So um, let's talk about some of the properties that we have on site. So, okay. So as we all know, the last property that we had that we never really launched and opened was this, this last commercial building. The building that was built in 1920, we went in and we gutted everything out. We started to do renovations, but then we had the market crash and commercial uh, re real estate just went in the tank and there was no point in us investing that money and just have the property sit. So we, we basically have it back to the shell. Um, it's all framed out. We did start this summer bringing new utilities in, uh, getting permits and everything. And the one big delay we had was the electrical. On the electrical side of the project, the infrastructure that was there was just completely outdated. Uh, it was designed in the 1950s for a small barbershop and a small restaurant. None of that stuff was nowhere near uh, code requirements now. Not only that, but the the uh, utility infrastructure that 
from Center Point Energy, who's the utility provider that, that feeds into our building, was not adequate. So when we when we submitted our first set of plans to the city, um, they told us that what we were doing as far as it being a, a creative space, an event space, would require a very high um, occupancy rate, which means you have to have very strong um, AC systems, electrical systems in the building because of the demand of the electrical load that's going to be pulled by that building. So they wanted us to install what's called a three-phase system, which is a commercial grade system for the ACs. Um, however, there was no um, infrastructure coming from Centerpoint into the building to support that, which meant Centerpoint was saying that they would have to spend, well, they'd have to put about thirty-five dollars to $40,000 into buying a big transformer to put on the new pole just to supply our building, and they wanted us to pay for it. Um, however, we also knew that as everything continues to grow in the community, especially along Lions Avenue, there's going to be more commercial buildings along that street. And it just didn't make sense for us to have to invest out of our pocket for center points to then have all the upside of that once all the rest of the businesses start coming in. So we gave them pushback and we held off and um, it, it finally paid off for us. Uh, we were able to talk with the city and city planners, city engineers, and they were able to identify a way that we could use three residential units for the AC system instead of one commercial unit, which allows us to not have to go to the bigger three-phase electrical grid, but we can stay on the, on the single phase. And we've also got them to contribute to, they, they, do step, they do still have to bring in a new transformer, but the city agreed to step in and cover that cost on, on behalf of our project because they know what it's gonna do for the area. So, you know, it, we, we did have some delay, but it's one of those things where you, when, you, when you're in a world of investing in real estate, you can't rush just to get something done. You have to be patient. You have to be calculated. And, you know, you, sometimes you don't know exactly how it's going to turn out, but it's always better to check all the boxes and have two or three conversations with people, even if they tell you no the first time, because you, you we can have outcomes like this where we're, we're basically going to save money now on what we would have to, we would have had to spend money on ourselves. Oh, so some other exciting news. The, so the building next door, the one that we've been that we've had open for a while, there's a podcast studio. Uh, it's been garnering a lot of attention, and it's kind of been running on autopilot. When we when we first launched it, we had to push for a lot of the marketing, um, social media, um, ask for a lot of word of mouth uh, recommendations or referrals. But since it, since I had been doing so well, it's like one of the top ranked sites in Houston. As a matter of fact, we won the award last year for number one event space in Houston. And so now we have people from all over just booking the space. We've had the own network use it two or three times. I told y'all that before. Uh, we've had several television shoots, uh, video shoots. And recently, someone that was in, in church at Lakewood sent me a video uh, during church service. And they were, sure enough, they were shooting uh, in our spot. They had used it like for production a week ago. Unfortunately, we're praying for them now because we I don't know if everybody knows, but they had an incident at church uh, last week where an active shooter came in there. But, um, you know, this is just a testament to um, how we can go into the community and take what was abandoned house that everybody was overlooking, um, thought it, would, it should have been torn down. And we've turned it into something that's become almost, I would say, a landmark or a staple in the community. And with that, um, since we've had it for three years, we've had a lot of events, a lot of parties. There's been a lot of foot traffic in there. We, I usually go in there once a year and do what, what you call a refresh so, you know, go and redo the floors and everything that's got wear and tear, um, sheetrock damage, um, th things like that that are small, minuscule, you know, just touch up all the paint everywhere. Um, we, we usually have that expense every year that we just keep uh, reusing the space for, for the same purpose. However, it's always good to, um, when you're dealing with the event spaces, to kind of give it a fresh look, give it a fresh use case. And so we decided to partner with IO. Um, Isaac Yalman, who's um, the, the the designer and the the, the um, media, I would say local mogul. He, he does a lot of film production, movie production. He's got uh, Grammy winning songs, triple platinum albums. Um, but so he does a lot on the film production side. And since we're doing so well with the film production, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to allow him to take over the space for a little while. They're actually going to invest. They're going to invest 
some of the capital required to redo some of the other rooms to give it more of a production feel versus an event space feel. And then they're going to actually run the operations for that space. So what that does for us is that that takes away our expense of having to have a personal uh, uh, manager for the property, which we, which we were doing before. They're going to manage it. And then by them having to put capital into it, they have skin in the game. So they have um, as much motivation as we do to see it do well. So the agreement that we've come to with them is we we're, we looked at what our average revenue was each month last year, and we're going to still be able to make that as a base case. And then anything that's made above that, we're going to, we're going to give them a split on paying back their initial investment in the renovations. And then we all split the rest of the profits. So we haven't come to those exact numbers yet. I'll, I'll update y'all when we have them, but that is the general overview. So, you know, we, we won't miss any money while we're, while, while they're taking over and it's going through transition, they will feel like they're getting a slight return on their investment. And then we both benefit from the upside from there. So once we get those actual numbers defined, I'll let everybody know what that structure is going to be. And um, once again, everybody can um, just go to PeerSpace at any point in time and you can look at the site, you can look at the reviews, you can see, you know, how, how booked the place is because everything's open, um, open access is open for the public because it's there for people to book for any type of use. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the residential side. So as I said earlier, we did have two tenants pass away. We do have four tenants that we're actually having to evict. Unfortunately, we've been working with them for several months. Um, housing assistance programs that pay rent, uh, but some of them just don't have an interest in, in uh, cooperating. So, you know, we are not in the charity business. We are in the community revitalization and saving business. So um, we're going through that part of the process now. Uh, one of them has already moved out ahead of the court date. So we have three left. Actually, and what's what's crazy is one of the people we're evicting wasn't actually ever our resident. He was the cousin of a resident that moved out like three months ago, four months ago, and he just became a squatter. So, uh, and we found that out after the first two or three weeks he was in there. And so this is this is the, the another good thing that you all get out of this process is you get to learn what it's really like to be a landlord and be a real estate investor, the good, bad, and the ugly. So he was there for like three weeks. He told the law enforcement that he had been there for just over a month. But once somebody's in there for 30 days, they have civil rights to squat on the property and it becomes a civil matter. It's no longer a criminal trespassing. So now we have to go through the expense of having him as one of the people that we're evicting in this process over the next month or so. So, um, you know, unfortunate circumstance, thankfully he's not causing any disturbance on the property or anything, but it is a nuisance. And this is just the ugly side of uh, being a landlord in real estate. And believe that this, believe me, believe you me, this happens in all different levels of real estate. It's not just in low income communities. Um, people do it at, at, at all different levels. Um, so the benefit that we do have of having these units vacant now is that we will be able to go into them and refresh them and give them some fresh paint. So if you all remember, we only fixed the units in the beginning that were vacant or had serious repairs that were needed that were what you call deferred maintenance. Deferred maintenance is anything that the previous landlord did not do. Um, and they were just, you know, kicking the bucket, kicking, kicking the rock, kicking the can down the road because it was not an immediate issue for them. Well, when we came in and bought it, we didn't want to have any of those uh, red flags pop up. So we uh, decided to go ahead and handle all those repairs. Well, now we get to go back to these other units and get them up to speed to look as good as uh, some of the units we did initially, which is also going to help us with the Houston Housing Authority's uh, voucher program where they're going to uh, give us rent amounts that are basically going to double some of the rents that we had before or at least raise the rents by 50 percent um so we'll be we're going from 550 to i think the highest rent we have right now is 750 um and then we're going to be between 1100 and 1280 for each unit and that that additional rent is not coming out of the tenant's pocket it's coming from the housing authority um for those of you that were uh, in the project about a year and a half ago, we had the housing authority chairman come on and talk to us. And since, you know, we're doing what their mission statement is, is to pr keep housing affordable and keep residents in their community that they're from, since they see we're doing that, they're going to subsidize 
our business case so that we don't have to, so we can stay afloat, be profitable, want to stay in the community and still provide housing for the residents. All right, so I don't know if this one's gonna play either. I might have to go back to the other video. Now I wanna give you guys an update on everything's going on in the area. So let me go back to YouTube. See if I can pull this video up really quick. Okay, yep, got it here. Give me one second, guys. Zoom. Okay. Okay, so if you all remember when we first started. This development site was really nothing but dirt. Um, these can't, if you can see the screen, these these townhouses you see in front of me were starting to sell about 319, 325. Now they're selling between 429 and like 499 right now. They had got up to the 500s for a little while, but of course, you know, interest rates going up and everything, prices have, have dipped a little bit, but still significant increases. And this site was completely just dirt. So to the right is the 450 unit uh, Laura apartment complex where rents, majority of rents are over $2,000 a month. Um, they do have like 10% affordable units. The back, the buildings in the back are commercial buildings um, where Google's going to have a couple of floors in one of the buildings and a couple of the big name ways like the Houston um, Port Authority is going to have uh, an office on one of the floors. This on this side is not part of East River. This is the private developer that came in, but a 600 unit apartment complex right across the street right off of Buffalo Bayou. And then back there in the white is another big apartment building that's going up right now. So you have about, we're looking at right here about $1.5 billion worth of projects going on. And this is just still, we're still in the first phase of, of, of this East River deal. So let me get out of this. All right, so let me get back to the presentation. And guys, if you have questions, make sure you're just taking notes so that um, you can ask your questions whenever we get done here. Okay. okay, so so some of this was in the update, the PDF. I'm not sure if everybody read through it, but we'll walk through it really quickly anyway. Um, so yeah, so the summer of 2024, most of those buildings you saw will be online. The apartment building already has tenants moving into it. Um, uh, they have a lot of leaf specials right now trying to just really incentivize people to, to really, uh, get in there. Uh, but once they do, it's, it's going to be a, a drastic change because right now it's still a bunch of buildings under construction. There's not really a lot of open reason for that to be a point of destination, but as soon as everything opens up, that's when you're really going to see the market go crazy over there because everybody's going to know it's there. A lot of people still don't really know what is going on in the neighborhood. Um, one of the most um, inciting tenants that's going to be there is the Broham Food Market. I actually know this guy personally. He's a, he's a brother named Johnny um, who's been in the community for a long time. He's had small mom and pop uh, bodega style grocery stores and he's had a fresh foods initiative, a fresh farm. And so he's going to be the anchor tenant um, for grocery in Fifth Ward. So it'll be the first open grocery grocer with fresh food that's ever really been in Fifth Ward proper. Everybody else right now goes across the freeway to um, to the Heights area to go to like to Kroger or whatever, uh, which is still pretty close. But you know, the East River and the developers really had a focus on making sure. They had local impact and the local businesses were reflected in some of the key areas that, um, you know, that they know the community really needs, so, which is really commendable of them because they didn't have to do that at all. And of course, East River, the golf course has been going really, really well. Um, it's it, They've been having a lot of events. They're booked up almost through the end of the year already for day and weekend events. And um, they, they do a lot of charity golf tournaments and everything. So, you know, it's really cool. All right, so now we get to 
the exciting stuff. Let's talk about the money. So um, as y'all know, we've had a lot of issues with the platforms not being able to keep up. So we've been doing everything manually. So last year we opened it up and during our summer um, our summer uh, update, we sent out the forms, let everybody elect to either buy or sell shares. We gave everybody about 45 to 60 days to get their information in, get submitted. And then we started processing the purchases first. So we've probably done about $300,000 in transactions over the course of last year. These are all individual purchases and then other people selling shares and then us having to document it. And so, you know, as I told you all before, it had the platforms been doing what they were doing, this process would be a lot easier because everybody could just log on, click, and I could just log on and the attorneys could log on and just click and see an updated list of everything. But we've have, we've been having to manually do checks and balances uh, to make sure that everything is uh you know accurate as because this is one of the most important parts of the project of course so the everyone that, that was bought out they were bought out about six seven dollars a share that was including the original fifty dollar share price that was including uh what we consider the, the share appreciation and all the accrued distributions so when you look at that uh, total investment total return is about 34 percent return um, over the over the course of if you were in from the beginning, maybe two and a half years. Uh, some people got in after that, so they you know happened to buy at the right time. So um, we're pretty excited about those numbers. Um, then again, in late July, early August, we will have that opportunity to open up again for everyone. So what what we decided to do on the shareholder certificate side was instead of having a constant. A uh, legal bill coming in by having the legal team work on one or two accounts at a time. Uh, we decided to wait until we got everything accumulated, and so now that we're, we're we we finished out and closed out twenty twenty three, we we're processing everybody's updated shareholder certificates right now. I know some of you have gotten them already. We talked to the legal team today. They thought they would have everybody finished by today, but they're they're projecting to have everybody done by next week. If you have any discrepancies, if you have if you see any errors, feel free to send an email to uh to them you can copy us on it um all we just need to show is a uh, you know proof of investment something may have slipped through the cracks here or there but we you know we've been really diligent about making sure we have everybody's information as accurate uh, as the data that we have um, on hand now anybody that wants to buy new shares that window is about to close um and again so the 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 um, the challenging part about crowdfunding and having everybody have shares is Everyone's familiar with how the stock market works, where if you if you see something in the news today, you can decide to go sell your shares tomorrow. If you need to liquidate something because you need cash, you can do that next day or the same day. Well, with with these types of uh, investment funds, we don't have that that flexibility, what's called liquidity, because the money is not sitting in a bank account just waiting for somebody to ask for uh, you know, a transaction, it's actually invested in actual assets. So we have to pull the money out of revenue, out of cash flow, out of profits to purchase shares back from investors, uh, shareholders. And then we have to have shares on hand to be able to sell to anybody that wants to buy or purchase more shares. So that's why we only allow that process to happen once a year because, and, and also we can't do it directly. Um, the actual transfer of the documents has to happen by a third party. That's why we have the legal team involved. So we can collect the funds, but we can't do the actual transaction. It has to be a, third, a neutral third party that facilitates that part of it for us. So when you look at the $67 buyout versus the $75 buy-in, that's why, because we have to, as a company, we have to make sure that the cost for all this administrative activity is covered in addition to um, paying out shares and paying out, or, you know, whatever profits and original investment was put into the project. So say all that to say, um, we made it through the roughest part of it. Everybody that's still here that we had, we did have some investors that really just <laughs> didn't like the fact that they couldn't log in every day and see what the share value was, which is understandable. So, you know, some people were more focused on that. They were focused on the bigger vision of why we were in this project, what we were doing it for. Well, thankfully, we're we're going to be past that phase now because Core Connects, who we have been on for the past um, a year and a half, almost two years, they were actually a startup and we got with them too. So they were still building out all of their user uh, user amenities and user benefits. And so now all that stuff is online and we will be able to do everything from the portal. And they've even added the the online, uh, I mean, the, the mobile app 
so that everybody will be able to log into your account and see the updates. Um, now, what you what, what still will only happen about once a year is the value increase, the value of the shares, because this is not like the stock market. Things don't go up and down every day. Um, re real estate is a little bit slower moving. So, you know, do you only get a real value appreciation when you get a new appraisal done? So it's like, hurry up and wait. You invest at the right time. You know the values are going up but you don't get a documented value increase or do a documented indication of what the value has increased until you reappraise the property. So, you know, but now that we have this service, we can do this more efficiently every year. We can still talk about uh, once, re once revenue gets back up, you know, we have more, more profitability once we get these units leased back up and we get the other building online, then we, we can talk about, um, how that's going to reflect in the account, which is in, instead of it being separate distributions, um, since we've had probably 95% of everybody decide to let their um, their distributions accrue, we're just going to start converting those over to additional shares. So if for you on the investor side, it doesn't reflect any differently because if you want to get distributions, you just liquidate some shares, right? So it's it's the same, but it, it takes the, makes the accounting a lot easier for us as we roll everything over um into the the new platform so that it's it um it's less variables in the equation and less things that we could that could possibly be missed so yeah so the platform all the shareholder communications like everything that's in the, the uh the block vester dropbox folder that's the houston block vester updates.com um all updates for meetings will be in there um you can have notifications turned on on your phone so you get all those even you know now we still did have some challenges with um, text messages or emails getting blocked or getting caught by spam filters. Uh, we, we bypass all of that by having everything housed on the platform. When we get ready to do buy sales, buys or sell opportunities, you know, you can you can elect that through the platform. And also just all the project statuses and the reports, all that'll be available within the dashboard. So really excited about that. And for the first time, we are going to have an in-person meeting, um, April, end of April. So anybody that is in town or uh, wants to plan to come to town, please mark this date on your calendar. Um, we're going to try to get some city officials out there. We'll try to make it a, uh, a pretty big event. We want community residents, some of our long-term tenants to be there so you guys, you guys can meet them. And we want to make it um, really a celebration for what we've been able to do as um as owners of a significant um, landmark, a piece of property in the in the uh, Fifth Ward community. So with that, um, again, so this, you know, guys, you all, you all, you all know, we always do two calls. This is the first one, just giving you a general overview. I want to give you all time to think of any other questions you may have, any other concerns. You can email us this information, and we'll try to get those answers to you before the next call. If not, we can address it on the next call. Um, again, Houston Block Vista updates will have all this, all the information from the previous call so you can see wh where we've come from and where we are now. And then if you have any issues with your online account with Core Connects, uh, just go to support at coreconnects.com, send them an email. You can copy us on it if you want, and uh, they will be able to make sure your, your online account is set up. So a little bit more about the timeline. After all the um, shareholder certificates are updated and we get feedback from everyone that everything looks accurate, that's when we're going to tell Core Connect to update everything in their system because we didn't want to have double work again where, you know, it, 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 the, the information is conflicting. So if you got your shareholder certificates and if you don't see anything wrong, we don't hear from you in a couple of weeks, we're going to assume everything's right. Um, if you see anything wrong, please feel free to give us information so we can make sure it's right. So that the, the database that we provide to Core Connect to update everybody's information is accurate. And at that point in time, you also see the new share prices and new share values updated as well. Okay, so I tried to run through that pretty efficiently. Let me see if we have any questions. Do we have any questions in here? We do have some questions. Um, did you want to answer them now or should we just send out like a frequently asked questions? Uh, Let's see what time is it. We got time. To, we got about fifteen minutes, so let's let's answer a few of them, and whatever we don't get to. Um, okay. Um, what is the window to purchase new shares? 
Okay, so we had really originally committed through through this weekend. So if you don't get them before Sunday, we're going to close that off, and we won't we won't reopen that up until we have everything available through Core Connect. So we won't have to do all the manual uh, components of it. So February eighteenth, right now, is the last day. Okay, and um, are there dividends going to be rolled into new shares? Yes, yes, that's what we're saying. Yeah, dividends rolled into new shares. Okay, and is there going to be tax documents sent? Yes, so uh, I want to talk to you all about that too. What we're, what we're, we're trying to do is, is figure out a, a way through our securities um, attorneys that we don't have to do the usual tax reporting that will be required for a fund because the investment amounts are so much. And it, it if, if we did it the way that they want us to do it, it would eat, it would cost us 50 or $60,000 every year. So I know several uh, uh, other crowdfund um, operators and owners have figured out ways to minimize that cost. So that's what we're working on now before we send these these um, accountants out with all this because it, it literally it literally triggers a K-1 statement, which is an individual tax accounting for each individual investor in the entire fund. So we may have to restructure the way the, the, the um, operating agreement is written, um, but we're working on that right now. So if we can't get around it, we will have to do it again this year, but we're hoping to be able to avoid that. Okay, this next question just says fractional share buying from the dividend reinvestment. It's going to be automatic. It's just, it's going to convert over. So instead of it having, instead of you having two separate categories of, let's see, a share and let's say a ten dollars in dividends, it's going to be, you're going to have this many shares and 0 0.33 shares, which is equivalent to the dividend amount. So it'll just be, it'll be like fifty-five point three shares instead of fifty-five dollars and and fifteen dollars accrued in dividend interest. You know. Okay, and when will the updated share information and certificates be received? Uh, that, well, that, that's what we're saying now. They're sending all those out right now. Um, there's almost fifteen hundred people in this, and like I said, they're doing everyone manually. So, and and there's triple checking, right? You can't just send out a certificate. You gotta they're they're, they're double checking, um, list against list, reconciling to make sure all the stuff makes sense. So it's, it does take a while, but thankfully this will be our last time having to go through this manual process. Um, Core Connects actually has their own version of a blockchain that'll that'll keep all this data uh, up to up to date. Uh, Jacqueline, I see your question about um, distributions. Everything has accrued. If you have not received distributions, it has accrued, and every share is treated the same. So as long as you confirm the number of shares you have, there there is there won't be any discrepancy uh, on what the distributions are. Can you purchase new shares from Core Connects? No, not yet. Cannot. That won't be until this summer, probably at the earliest. Only okay, what is the hmm? what is the appraised value of the property now? Uh, the, okay. Let let let's play this. The last appraised value was one point eight million. That was over a year ago. Um, the well, I'm sorry. The last tax appraised value was one point eight million. When we got the property appraised, it appraised at one point nine seven. Um, the tax value now is, I believe you guys go look it up. I think it's like 1.85, which is good because, you know, everybody's value went down last year. So we're back at 1.85 there. We have to get it appraised again. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be around 2 million. Um, we'll, so we'll do that. And I didn't want to do it too early because the, the market is recovering. And as you know, whenever day you, you would like to get that appraisal done, they're going to use those exact numbers. And if we know interest rates are going down, we know demand is going to go up this summer. We should wait until the summer to get the appraisal done so that we get a true valuation at that point in time. But the shareholder certificates are PDF email. They're electronic. All right. And then it says valuation updates for IRA investors, FMV. Yes. If you need that, just um, send, that, send that over. We can do that. Um, you can even pull tax um, value information with, since we didn't have an updated appraisal yet this year. But I mean, they, they just wanted a roundabout market value. They just want to make sure you haven't lost all your money. You know, that, that's all they're really checking for. What is the total share count of the entire fund? 21,000 something. Um, oh, hold on. I can look right here. 21,685 shares. Can you go over the process of buying new shares and where to buy them from? 
Um, well, like I said, we had two days left on that. We had the the legal team create a form where you fill out where you verify your identification, your personal information, and um, then you elect how many shares you wanted. So to, uh, they are called the transfer agent. They handle that part of it. Um, then we send you the link to make the payment. Once we receive the payment from you, we confirm to them that we receive the payment and they issue the shareholder certificates. Do you all protest the property taxes? Um, we have not protested the property taxes last year. We may do it this year. The challenge with protesting property taxes in an area where the values are going up so quickly is that it can backfire. And they can say your, your value should be even higher. They can ask for rent revenue and our revenue and all that stuff is going up. So I don't feel like we're we're unfairly um being taxed right now. They they're usually staying between 10 and 15 percent below market tax. Um but I tell you the other property I had last year guys uh the, the church property that I bought with the other small group of investors um we got hit with a three hundred thousand dollar tax bill. So you got to be very careful when you play that game. Um there there especially in markets where there's a lot of real estate investors, the taxing authorities are becoming a lot more savvy to that game. All right, that's all the questions in the chat. I know Tim had his hand up wanting to ask. Okay. You on mute, Tim. Yeah, what's up, Chris? Um, appreciate the update, man. I, I, I kind of missed the last few calls. I'm just not catching up. Appreciate, you know, what you and Brittany are doing. Mm -hmm. um, my question is kind of alluded to, like, the last comment in there. We purchased, like, about 110 shares in July 2022. Mm -hmm. um, we got the receipt, right, saying we paid for it or whatever. Yeah. But we have no information on any certificates. We filled out that JOT form you sent. Yeah. The attorneys, it's been nothing. We haven't heard anything. So I'm sure something is going on, but we're just, I haven't had a chance yeah. to catch up. So I'm yeah. trying to figure out how, how do we get caught up here? Yeah, if y'all if y'all haven't gotten it, and once again, it might be it, it is a little bit overwhelming for the legal team too, just to be honest. So if, if y'all didn't get it, y'all need to make sure y'all let us know because they're sending everything out right now. They're sending everything out right now with all the updated shareholder certificates. Um, log in the core connects. If you don't see it reflected in there, let us know. And it's, it's, it's checks and balances, right? If core connect doesn't have it, or you don't get anything from them, then we need to update it. And once we get through this last cycle of this, we won't have this issue anymore, but it's, you know, it, it's, it's been tough to, to keep everything, uh, congruent across the board with so many people involved. So yeah, it, just, just what, if you have the receipt, send us that and we'll, we'll get it straight. All right. Thanks. Someone was asking, um, with the app being updated, is it normal for the app to show their portfolio as blank? Uh, yeah, if, if you bought recently um, or if you didn't register uh, when we first had everybody registering, yeah, it's probably not going to show anything because there's not, they, they don't have any, you know, it's data in, data out. So if, we, if you didn't put the data in, it's not going to show anything until we finish what we're doing right now. So, and I just want to, so let me clarify a reason why we're having all these challenges one more time for people that don't remember. Everybody else that did crowdfunds, majority, 99% of crowdfunds were people raising money for a startup company and people that put money in were not getting a return on their investment for like five years. Hey, you may get your money back in five years. Um, and this that because there's more it was more used as a tool for like venture capital. They were not ready for a group of investors to go buy a cash flowing real estate asset that had money coming in all the time and values already going up. So that's why it's been taking all these platforms so long to catch up to what we need. Um, we're, we're literally probably one of five in the country that I know of that actually have an active real estate investment and not doing a development where you still have a year or two where the money's there, but everything's being planned. They started construction and it's not really profitable yet. So, you know, to them, we, we were, we were like a, a an anomaly. And so that that's why it's been so hard. And that's why we've been working overtime, having to do a lot of this stuff manually uh, to get um, us to where we are. And I think we're all, probably the only one that's really doing a social impact development project for real estate, for sure. Should they have received an email about access, accessing their CoreConnects account? Definitely, yes. Uh, support at CoreConnects. If you have not gotten that, send the email to them, support at CoreConnects, and they will get you set up with that. That looks like all the questions in the chat. I don't see anyone with their hand raised. Okay, cool. Well, appreciate all the questions. Um, if you, if you all do have any more, you know, like I said, we'll be back on in two weeks. Uh, we actually talked to Core Connects. We're gonna try to get them to come on and um do a walkthrough a tutorial for everybody as well. 
And if you all want that on the side, you can also reach out to them and they can walk you through it. Um, again, the, I'm pretty sure anybody on here that's reached out to the legal team has gotten a response. So, you know, we're all we're all collectively trying to make sure we keep everything aligned and you know, hopefully this time next year we'll, we'll be we'll be through all of these challenges we've been having with the technical side of the stuff. So our asset is doing great, but you know, it's the uh, the reporting that's the challenge right now. I'm not sure if you already gave the exact date, but our next Zoom meeting is going to be on Thursday, February 29th at 7 p.m. Central Time. And I put that in the chat also. And I'm sure we'll send an email blast out to everyone, but I know some people don't receive the emails. So. All right. Can you say that date again? Yes, it'll be Thursday, February 29th at 7 p.m. Central Time. And, we'll, and of course, we'll send follow-up emails out and text messages out to everybody, too. And we'll put it in the Core Connects account now, so since we have that. And it'll be in the Blockbuster Updates folder, so if anybody has any questions, we'll have it everywhere you can find it. Yep. Thanks, Chris. We appreciate you guys. No problem. Appreciate everyone uh, being involved and sticking with us through this mission. Um, I'm really excited to see where everything goes once the uh, East River opens up. I think everybody's going to be really surprised at <laughs> what's about to happen over there. So, all right. Talk to everybody later. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.